Hello fellas and files, Film Guru here. For those who are new to the channel, my name's Sean, also known as Film Guru, and I do a variety of videos in regards to movies, TV shows, and a variety of other film content. So thanks for joining me today. I want to sort of change the type of movies I review on this channel. So I'll still do big budget films if I really enjoy them, you know, like I'll be looking at Dune and Halloween Kills and a variety of films like that. I really just want to start focusing on doing reviews of more unique and smaller and, and interesting films and films that are banned and a variety of other films that people don't really know a lot about. And I want to start to pursue looking at these particular films and doing reviews. I just feel I have much more to say about these particular films than the big budget movies because I just feel like with the bigger films, what can I say that's different to everybody else? I know we'll, we all have an opinion and stuff like that, but I just feel that I don't know what I can really contribute to that unless I really enjoy it. So I just want to start looking at different movies and I want to start looking at much more horror films as well because I'm a big horror fan and I haven't done a lot of horror reviews on this channel so I want to start doing things like that. So I hope you start to like the content that I'm going to deliver. So first cab off the rank with this particular type of reviews is Richard Linklater's first film, Slacker. This film came out in 1990 and it was very unique when it came out. He's a very interesting and unique filmmaker and I really love the movies he's, he gives us. And this is kind of this really unique experience, I would say, with this film, where we open up with Rich Lee, Richard Linklater himself playing a particular character and he starts to talk about dreams and, and the idea of multiple verse, universes existing and choices we make and how this, that leaves another sort of alternate world. He uses a reference of Wizard of Oz, the scene where Dorothy meets a scarecrow and they start to imagine de each of the directions they go and the lives they live. That's sort of a really reference and starting point for this particular film. It's a real fly on the wall look at people who live in Austin, Texas in the 90s. He expresses so much in this film and not a lot happens. And he has this great flow where we'll meet a character and then we'll pass on to another character and then we follow them for a bit and then pass on to another character and another character. And he does that throughout the film, but so interesting and captivating. In a lot of ways, he reminds me of Jim Jamash with his direction and also John Cassavetes with the type of films Cassavetes used to make. There's just something really fascinating about the movie. I felt connected from the beginning, even though we, we don't stick with one particular character, we just meet a variety of interesting ones. And it feels like a film filled with non-actors and Lick later is able to draw something out of them. And I really love that. There's so many weird and wacky people in the film that I love. There's one character who's obsessed with the JFK assassination and he wants to write his own book and he goes on this whole telling everybody what he thinks about it, whether people want to listen to it or not. There's another character that sort of is in his house is just TVs, TVs everywhere, and he just keeps them running all the time. And he becomes obsessed with television and, and he's kind of a really fascinating character and I really like that. I like what Linklater is able to capture here and do. It's he's so original and unique. And this film sort of encapsulated a lot of stuff that Linklater would use later, especially with the Before trilogy and Waking Life and a variety of other movies that he's created himself off original material. And this really encapsulates that. I was just blown away by it, the simplicity of it. I like the use of camera. I like this, this opening sequence is made to look like one complete shot and I love that. It's just filled with really colorful and unique characters and it really just takes place in one single day. And what he's able to capture there is fascinating. Each character is unique in their own struggles. He's talking about society, global warming, um, aliens, all the conspiracy theory ideas that are out there with JFK and a variety of other things, and just people in general and how they interact with each other and, and the lives that they live within this small town and, and how they are shaped by what they've been through and are going through. It's just, yeah, I was really impressed with it. It just felt really original. And I know we have a lot of films like that these days that are sort of focused more on fly on the wall type experiences. But there was just something about this that I found far more interesting than a lot of those movies. And it really doesn't have a main character. It's just a variety of people. And, and we just see their day-to-day -day lives. And I thought it was really great. He's a director I really like. I like all of his movies. I like the choices he makes. I like the worlds he crafts and what he has to say. He feels like a very intelligent guy. He's all about philosophy and thoughts and ideas 
and, and, and just everyday people in general. Even though I like all of his films, I like the original content ones, the one that he comes up with himself that's not based on a book or a story or anything like that. I think these are the ones that feel a bit more personal for him and, and for us as an audience. Like Boyhood's a great example of that. Just what he does with those things and how he sort of experiment and also dazed and confused, which this film feels a little like except we have much more main characters in that we follow them in this film. But it just feels like the beginning of that. There's just something about his storytelling I really love. And I love interviews with him. He's just a really fascinating guy and he's able to craft some really interesting and fascinating movies. And this is definitely one of them. This is a really great first film. He it's, it has a clear vision. He knew what he wanted to do with it. He moves the camera in the way he wants to. It feels very 90s and he's, it sort of encapsulates that 90s way of thinking and then society at the time and what was going on in the world. I think he captures that quite well. And a lot of directors that came out of the 90s weren't that impressive with stuff like this, with the simplicity of the story. If you haven't seen this film, I do recommend it. It is really interesting, especially if you like sort of just everyday life, fly on the wall type film. And that sort of tries to show you how we're all connected in the smallest of ways. Even though it is an older film, it felt so refreshing to see, see this film once again. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit subscribe down the bottom, follow me on Facebook and Letterboxd. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.